Well, good evening to everyone. Amen. It is so good that we have uh, gathered on today. Amen. For this special empowerment uh, session, for this special empowerment session. And uh, would we just stand all over the sanctuary now? Amen. Where's my elder designate peace? Come on, Sister Donnie. Amen. And now uh, we're just going to go before just a word of prayer. And we're going to ask Sister Donnie to give us one praise and worship selection. And then uh, we're going to come back and introduce um, our special speaker for tonight. So can we just begin to worship God? Hallelujah. Can we put worship in the building? Hallelujah. Come on. I need you to lift his name. Oh, Hallelujah. Come on. God is great. Come on. He's ah, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Ooh, he's wonderful and he's kind. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Great is our God. Great is our God. Great is our God. And he's worthy. He's worthy of our praise tonight. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Come on. I need you. Come on. I need you to push in. I need you. Come on. Pull on God. Pull on God. Come on. Pull on God. Pull on God. Pull on God. Come on. I need you to pull on God. Hallelujah. I need you to fill the room. Come on. Fill the room. Fill the room. Come on, glory is in your mouth. Glory is, hallelujah, I said glory is in your mouth. Father God, we come to say thank you. We come to give you worship and praise on today. We thank you for what you're doing even now in this place. We thank you for the ground has already been tilled and turned for the move of your spirit, God. We thank you for this time of feasting. We thank you for holy convocation where your people have come to hear from you, where your people have come for transformation. Your people has consecrated for these moments to for with you, God. And God, we say thank you, God. We pray, hallelujah. We pray, ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray even now, God, that you would even be with us. Bring us together on one accord. Turn this place into the upper room. Where the people were together on one accord. And there shall be a sound. We're looking for a sound. Hey, a sound from heaven that will fill the room that will fill the people oh god have your way god we give you free course i said we give you free course do what you have purpose to do in this moment right now god so bless these your people right now god we thank you for spiritual reconstruction we call down liberation in the name of Jesus, oh God. This will not be a normal hour, but this is a holy hour. An hour that you've called us together. Hallelujah, you've called us together in your name. Hey, we come against the enemy and we know that he's already a defeated foe. The blood cover now. Hallelujah. The north, south, east and west. The blood cover now. No hindrances. Hallelujah. But freedom is in the place. So God, we thank you and we praise you and we honor you. I need the people to clap your hands and shout on ah, Shout on the God with the voice. I said, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Just join in with me really quick. We're going to sing a praise and worship to our Father. Tell me. Who can stand before us when we call on that great name of oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious, 
Oh, Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, hallelujah, we have the victory. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory hallelujah I love you I love you I love you Lord today because you care for me in such a special way that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back on Calvary. And yes, I pray. You. Come on and lift him up. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Oh God, we give you praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. One more time. Let me hear you sing with me. I love you. I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way, and yes, I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. Hallelujah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh God, we give you glory today. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Love you from the bottom of my heart, Jesus. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. On today, we have our special guest. We've been blessed all week long, amen. And we wanted to have one special session that turned from a lecture to empowerment. And as, as I begin to uh, speak with our, our guest, we, we met a, a few months ago. We were uh, in an in intensive at Virginia University. She came through Virginia University, where I am now, Virginia Union. 
the theological seminary there, but she continued on to receive her PhD from Waldron University in psychology. So I'm one step, I'm trying to catch up, amen. And uh, but while we were there, we, be, we would just begin to talk about the session in which we were in. And the Lord impressed upon me at that time that you know what, she's coming to Merlin. I asked one question, I says, will you come to Merlin? And she said, yes. And, um, and as we were planning this, the Lord says there's one more voice that need to be added to the quorum in which we have already invited. And uh, kind of at the last moment, but her name came upon me, my spirit. And I says, yes, she's the one that I already talked to. And she was just coming back in town from another engagement and uh, God made it so that there was space enough in her calendar even at the short notice for her to be here on today and uh, we know that she is the voice that God would have for this hour for we are in a historic moment of our church of 18 years that we've had revivals we've had many revivals here but this is our first holy convocation and uh, I knew that every voice that God would allow it would be a voice uh, that he has intended and a voice with great purpose so we're going to stand all over the room let's make ourselves ready for this impairment session we're talking about spiritual reconstruction and liberation let's put our hands together for Bishop S. Janine Hyman, Ph.D., in the name of the Lord. Thank you. Stay with the people. Stay with the people. All right. Well, you can have your seats. Thank you. I'm going to stay with the people, Bishop. Amen. We thank God for the prince of this area. And we thank God for the authority. Mm. And the spirit of the prophet that is about to drop on him in another dimension. Why do we need a prophet? A whole lot of people had the title prophet. I don't know what they are. <laughs> they be doing too much. I, I, I don't need anybody, Bishop, to tell me my name. I already know it. I need anybody to tell me my credit card number or the name of my aunt. I know it. Uh, we thank God for those people who have gifts. But the role of the prophet has always been relegated to the ministry of justice. The scripture says that the foundation of the Lord's throne is righteousness and justice. The foundation of God's throne is not spiritual. The foundation of God's throne is not salvation. It's not even getting to heaven. God don't have no concern about that. That's a Western creation. The scripture says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. It's something the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said, and it revolutionized my construction of God. Because God has been constructed for us by our slave master. They, they retrained us who God was as though we didn't come here with God when all of creation started in Africa. I know you up here. Louis Farrakhan said, God is not a Christian. He said, God is not a Muslim God. God is not a Jewish God. He said, if 
the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know how to talk, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said if Elijah Muhammad was here, he would be disgusted with the, with the Muslims. If Moses was here, we'd be disgusted with the Hebrews. If Jesus was here, he would be disgusted with the Christians, although he's not the author of Christianity. He said, God, not a Christian God. He's not a Hebrew God. He's not a Muslim God. He's the God of all creation. And he's the God of the righteous. And so from time and eternity, God has always had mouthpieces in the earth. There's no such thing as a Christian prophet. There's no such thing as a Muslim prophet. There's no such thing as a Hebrew prophet. God just makes prophets and then he puts them in institutions. He puts them in regions and puts them in times and he puts them in geographic location. Jesus was put in Judaism. And we don't understand that the foundation of God's throne, I, I don't know, I read the Bible from cover to cover. And I just found that scripture last year. I'm like, how did I miss this? That the foundation of God's throne, his rulership, is righteousness and justice. Therefore, prophets are an extension of the kingdom, not the church. They're not the same thing. The kingdom. Prophets are set in the kingdom to be not just spokesmen, but executioners of justice and righteousness. And so the message of the prophet is always justice. That's why they put a bullet in Martin. Martin wasn't preaching no heaven. Martin wasn't preaching get saved. Martin was preaching, give us our rights. We want equality. We ain't taking it no more. What you're doing is not right. That's why they put a bullet in Malcolm. That's why they put a noose around Jesus. See? Nothing changes. Everything is the same. Nothing new under the sun. And so the reason God is shifting you now, sir, is because there have been no justice for your people here in well over two, three hundred years. There's been no justice. That's why you're placed here strategically. There ain't been no justice. All right? And it's going to come out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, do the best I can in the time that I have, but I'm going to tell you strategically where America is on God's timeline. I'm going to tell you prophetically because the prophets ain't teaching this. All right? So you will understand what's going on. And you can arm yourselves and prepare yourselves for what is coming, but also prepare yourself for what God needs from you in this hour. And so we thank God for the authority that will rest upon you and for the places that God will give you in spaces at governmental seats, at tables. I'm looking at long tables. And you're the last one to walk in the door and sit down. Not even preferred, but essential. It's got to happen because of what was promised to your ancestors. Some of which was taken. Yeah, there is still property here that belongs to your people. It was taken. Some records are destroyed, but the records are somewhere else. They're going to show up. And so what should happen for an oppressed people and what should happen for a righteous people, we're going to have to actually find out what we lost. You can't expect restitution if you don't know what's been taken. If I don't know how much money you owe me, how am I demand that you pay me back with your pretty self? How am how, how I, I going to make demand 
that you pay me back when I don't know what you owe me. And so we can't even be guided in our prayer because we are uninformed, right? First of all, the purpose of prayer, and I told him, I said, I got nothing. I hate when God do me like this. It, obviously, he don't need my mind, all right? But the purpose of prayer is not to give God your grocery list, all right? So I'm going to deconstruct prayer first, okay? All right, so the purpose of prayer is not to give God your grocery list. The purpose of prayer is really not even to ask for what you want. Do the math. If there are 15 of you over here, and y'all all want something different about the same thing, which one of y'all God going to answer? I mean, make it make sense. Okay, because you're going to find out that the Christianity that we have been taught is very colonized. And it keeps us in a place of uh, wishful thinking, magical thinking. It doesn't position us for advocacy and takeover. We just be waiting on the Lord and being of good courage. Or as they say in Richmond, carriage. All right. <laughs> All right. So the purpose of prayer is not to tell God what you want. I know we be singing, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Now you call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. I know we be singing it. Jesus on the main line now. Okay. Now he on the telephone. I mean, come on, y'all. I mean, really? That was before cell phone. That maybe he on, maybe he on the tower now. He's on the tower now. All right. So all that stuff kind of informs uh, our theology. Wow. But it's off. <laughs> okay. Wow. The purpose of prayer is not to ask for what you want. Wow. The purpose of prayer is for not not for you to inform God of what's going on down here, as though He can't see. Y'all all right? Because I'm getting ready to deconstruct it. And then the purpose of prayer, most of us, be, the Lord just be nice to us because we, we sincere. <laughs> He's just nice because we sincere, right? He just say, Lord, them poor children, let me do something for that. Oh, all right. We already know this. I like him. The scripture says that our heavenly father knows what we have need of she got it when who knows Jesus Jesus so why y'all praying to Jesus y'all feel that clink clink they done clink clink me already you feel that clink clink they clink me. I just got here. How y'all clink me? I just got here. Really, guys? All right, listen. Your who? Your who? Jesus said, when you pray, pray after this pattern. Not say these words. Pray this pattern. Or as we say in Philadelphia, pattern. Pray after this pattern. Right. That's true. Our Father. Yes. Yes. What was that? Our Father. Thank you. So first of all, your prayer should be directed to your source. Hallelujah. Period. Come on. Anything else we taught we have gotten from evangelicalism. Who have made themselves a God in their own image. We've gotten it for Roman Catholicism, who early on in the second and third centuries made a God in their own image that they could worship. Our instruction was make me nothing. That's our instruction. Don't make me nothing. Don't make me no kind of image. Don't carve nothing. Don't put nothing up. <laughs> Jesus says God is a I like this. Y'all got the study over here. 
God is a what? God is not a man that he should lie. He's not even a male. God, he's not a male. All of that came out of patriarchy. If I take you back real far to your ancient African roots, you have found out that God was referred to in the female gender. Y'all not ready. You told me y'all was ready. God, 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 God was referred to in the female gender. That's why we call it Mother Earth. That's why we call it Mother Nature. So when your mama says, sit down, because it's thunder and lightning, and turn them lights out and sit your hips down, God is talking. God is talking. But it's Mother Nature. Do the math. So all of this racial, Roman, Greco-Roman stuff, uh, patriarchal, you know, male dominance and all of that stuff, that stuff has to be deconstructed in order us, for us to have a tangible, real move of God. The church, unfortunately, has been the place where we have solidified racism, where we have solidified sexism, where we have solidified ageism. Y'all old, sit down and hand us the mic. That's the kind of generation we have now. When y'all gonna hand us, when y'all gonna hand the baton? It's ageism, that's all. And because it's culture, and we were born in the culture, we don't know anything different. But our mandate is to come out from among them and be separate, not separated, because you can't reach who you separated from. But be separate, saith the Lord. And touch not again the unclean thing. Lord have mercy. The problem is that we have not come out from among them. Because we don't know what them is. We were born into it. And so we got to deconstruct this. So that you can construct. And build the thing correctly. Alright, I, I know where I'm at. Now watch. If your heavenly father knows what things you have need of before you ask. And if Jesus says use this pattern. So that you are saying our father. Then there also is no such thing as a personal savior. Now look how you're looking. There's no such thing as a personal savior. You won't find it from Genesis to maps or in any extra biblical uh, text. It's not there. This is not personal. This is collective. He didn't say when you pray, say my father. He's a collective God. This is why we call him the God of Israel. Not the God of a person. He's a God of a people. <laughs> he says when you pray, pray our father. Who art in heaven. This is an imperative. Hallowed be thy name. Sacred, righteous, holy is your name. Not the thing that we call you. That means your nature, your attributes, your characteristics is holy. Your nature is holy. Your word is holy. Your movement is holy. To be revered, to be feared is your name, your authority authority your kingdom all of that before you even ask for anything is a recognition that number one I am part of a collective and when I pray it can't just be about me my four and no more it's our father somebody said if, if all of us ain't free none of us ain't free if all of us haven't been liberated ain't none of us liberated it is our father who are in heaven sacred holy be your name come thy kingdom be, be done thy will this is an imperative where the son is making a demand on heaven come thy kingdom be done thy will we are not on earth no 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 the kingdom of God is throughout the whole of the universe come on here so it's not just even earthly he says in earth for we have this treasure hidden in earthen vessels 
in earth we are the earth to which he is talking your will be done in us your kingdom come in us through us be done thy will are you understanding what i'm saying this is going to revolutionize your prayer life now watch even when you're praying sir give us this day you're just praying for your house but if you pray for your house and everything around you is in poverty, ain't nobody got nothing. Give us this day our collective daily bread. And I'm trying to slow down here. Listen, the whole thing is about God's rule, his reign, his kingdom functioning through us. 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 Our problem is we have been taught this Europeanized uh, ethos or this worldview that is about me. It's my business. What I do is my business. Why are you up in my business? All of that crazy stuff that we're doing and spewing on social media. When, when you understand where you came from, there is no me without we. We don't have that concept anymore of we-ness. We don't have that concept anymore of community. We don't have that concept anymore that we are one we don't even have the concept of the body anymore we don't we don't have that because the culture is individualistic it's about me my needs what i want what i like what i feel what i do i mean this is crazy in other words if one of us is living in sin all of us are in sin Forgive us. Forgive us for what we owe you, God. Forgive us for what we owe this world that we haven't paid. Forgive us for what we owe our ancestors that we haven't paid. Forgive us. Our debt. Trespasses, whichever text you like. But the us ain't change. You got it? So the purpose of prayer. It's not for you to inform God about your individual needs. The purpose of prayer is not to get God to do what you want him to do. Then otherwise he becomes your servant. It has never been the design of the creator to cater to the creation. The purpose in the prayer... We will have to go back to the legends that are in Genesis 1. The purpose of prayer, Adam, which is not the name of a dude. It means humanity. Ruddy. Black. Came from earth. The spirit of God in an earth suit. That's what the word Adam means. We turned it into a name. An Anglo name. We've been lied to a long time. Lord Jesus, I might not get back through here, so I better drop it while I'm here. Now you say I was stuck with you for life. Don't be lying now. I done made you a prophet. I done made you a prophet. <laughs> Listen. Do it like this. Okay. Listen. In the quote, Genesis account, there's two or three of them in there, but in the Genesis account, when God creates, I want you to catch the pattern. This is why we need ap apostolic teaching. Because we're able to go back into the ancient mind of God and pull out patterns. All right, Everything on the earth run by pattern. The universe run by, by pattern. Everything is a pattern. That's why everything that reproduces is female. It's the same pattern all through creation. Then you have to ask yourself, Precious, why the only way God can get in the earth is through a womb? Whether it's the birds, the bees, the flowers, the trees, he can only get here through a womb. This is the way he designed it. 
He can only come from out of eternity and manifest material in time through a womb. Then why would he then subjugate the very thing that he uses in all of creation to get himself here? That's patriarchy. Now, now see, 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 I left him. I left him. Oh, they give me that look now. I love it when y'all necks get real stiff. <laughs> Yo, I mean, y'all get to the... Now, this is the Baptist nod. You have to turn the lips down. And then you go about five times. I mean, I hear what you say, but I ain't hearing it. I done, look, I done did this. All right, but I'm gonna show. I want to show. We gotta laugh because this is a little tight. Uh, I gotta show you a pattern because I want you to see it. Then I'm gonna tell you where we are in history, and then I'm gonna tell you why the reconstruction is necessary, so you can be in place, and not continue for us to walk in a fog of ignorance called religion. All right. When God goes to create, watch the pattern. He says, let there be light. And there was light. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and the thing divided. Okay, you have to, don't about it, no, because won't about it there. Obviously. <laughs> but they're trying to ask God, how did this happen? All right? All right, this stuff came from Africa. Seriously, they just stole it and put it in the Bible and put their name on it. I'm so serious. I am so serious. You look it up. You ain't got to believe me. You can look it up. Now watch. When he goes to populate or repopulate the earth, he looks in the heavens. The Hebrew is Shamayim. He looks in the Shamayim and he says to the Shamayim, the heavens, let the heavens bring forth winged creatures. That's where Patty learned how to do it so good. Just watching them winged creatures. All right. Them winged creatures. That's why when y'all get on a plane and fly, what they, all they did was studied nature and emulated nature. Come on here. That's it. All right. All right. So he says to the, to the shamayim, to the heavens, let the heavens bring forth winged creatures. All right. He's going to do it again. Then he's going to speak to the waters. And he says to the waters, let the waters bring forth what? This is not hard. This is not no trick question. They like the water. Let's see what go in the water. Yeah, let's see what go in the water. <laughs> what go in the water, y'all? Some of y'all gonna get something tonight. Some scrimps. Come on. All right. Let the let the waters bring forth swimming creatures. Is that right? All right. Then he speaks to the earth and said, "Let the earth bring forth uh, uh, footed creatures, anim animals." All right. Now. What is, what is consistent in that? He does not say, let there be fish. He does not say, let there, come get this, they, th let there be whales. He doesn't say that. He doesn't speak to any species at all. Thank you. Come on now. Uh-huh. He doesn't say let there be birds, let there be owls, let there be robins, let there be blue jays. He doesn't say that. All right. So we have to look for the pattern in the text. He doesn't say let there be cats and dogs and, 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 and frogs. No, 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 no. He don't do that. Right. In each case, he speaks to the environment and tells the environment to bring forth. Got it? You asking for things. No. He told you don't worry about that. Because that thing is who the, what the Gentiles worry about. They worry about their money, their, their finances, their this and their that. These things the Gentiles worry about. We're not even supposed to bring God no list like that. We're supposed to follow the pattern. The pattern is he speaks to the environment, tells the environment to bring forth what is needed to populate the earth. 
Now watch the pattern again. Let us Elohim, which is God in the plural, which means that God is all things and all things are God, but I'm one thing. Huh? Let us Elohim make Adam. Let us make the creation, the human, in our image and our likeness. He does not change the pattern. He uses the same pattern. He speaks to the environment, bring forth the birds. He speaks to the waters, bring forth the fish. He speaks to the ground, bring forth the animals. And when it is time to create us, he speaks to himself. We are, he is the environment from which we have been created. He is the environment from which we have been called. He, let us, he speaks to himself. He don't speak to the dirt. He speaks to himself. Then he goes and scoops in the dirt and puts himself inside the earth. Are you hearing me? Therefore, you may have been just born. Your mom and your daddy might have got it on girl but you weren't just born you were created out of the mind of God you came from the very essence and nature of God are you understanding what I am saying to you you're not from here you you are born here but you are not from here and so when God gets ready to create a bomb he speaks to himself and what happens to us we are part of himself in an earth suit y'all not gonna listen to this too much you are partakers of the divine nature you are spirit in a body trying to get through this quagmire called life are you understanding and so whenever we are not in our environment we can tell when you ain't been with God because you start acting funny I'm going to show it to you because the only way that the fish can thrive is that they are in their natural environment. They must be in their natural habitat. The only way that the birds can thrive is that they have to be in their natural habitat. Even though they may come on the earth to get food, listen to me, they can't stay on the earth because if they stay in an environment other than that from which they were created and called, they gon' die. So they get their food and they go back up in the nest. They move from place to place in the environment from which they were called out of. If you take fish out of water you're gonna see them do this they're gonna flip they're gonna flop because they are out of their natural environment and so you've got to put fish in the proper environment and you've got to make sure that the environment is conducive to reproduction in other words follow the pattern you have got to understand that when you have not been in the presence of the thing from which you were called out of you flipping and flopping you cussing and slamming doors and hitting walls and laying folks out and home with an attitude because you have been out of your natural environment you have been out of the place from which you were created you are spirit and the purpose of prayer is to realign you every day with your source sweat my hair and watch here yes, sir. every day Adam met with the creator in the cool of the evening every day because now we have to evaluate what I've done throughout the day watch and you get your instructions for the next day really at night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. It's a pattern. Y'all don't know nothing about that because y'all too Christian for that. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all too American for that. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And so every evening, in the cool of the evening, Adam would meet with his maker and be in the presence of God. That's Adam, Adam. It means male and female. And he called their name Adam. Y'all read the third part of this. All right, listen to me. And so when they heard a voice, what Dr. Kenny called snake eye, uh-huh when they heard the voice of a serpent that came to talk
taught them, not, 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 not taught them uh, uh, out of God. No, it was to talk God out of them. So these voices that you hear, these counter voices, thank you, precious, that you hear, that is the voice of the serpent trying to talk you out of God, trying to talk God out of you. It is trying to talk you out of your place. It is trying to get you to move by insecurity. It is trying to get you to move by fear. It is trying to make you make emotional decisions rather than spending time in the presence of your maker and finding out from God what the download should be what you need to do prayer is not to get God to do nothing prayer is to put you in position so you know what to do at what point do you stop waiting for God to come down here and then you say God I'm the answer to the prayer they need the money I'm the answer they need a, a word I'm the answer they need healing I'm the answer they need a, a solution I'm the strategist with the answer prayer is to position you to know what to say and what to do yes. 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 to help you to be the answer to somebody's prayer yes. y'all all right so that's the first thing the second thing is until you get in position God can't do nothing with you no way you're going to be continued to be led by the voice of a serpent who only gives you half of what God said in every lie there's a truth in deception there is truth because if it wasn't a tad of de a, a truth in it you wouldn't fall for it have not God said listen until we get in our places as sons and daughters of God this whole earth as a planet is going to continue to be off you can watch it you're going to hear it in a couple of days I ain't no hit and miss prophet you can hear this in a couple of days that something with the plates of the earth some kind of plates or something I've been seeing it for three or four days these little tectonic plates I don't, I don't know about that I'm not that kind of scientist I'm a social scientist huh and you're going to find out that there is something shifting in actually the earth there's something going on with the gravitational pull all of that I just know what the Lord shows me I don't know what he's talking about but I know and what here's the scripture right here the whole earth is in travail unto now waiting for the maturing the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God it ain't looking for Christians sons and daughters of God are everywhere it ain't looking for Muslims sons and daughters of God are everywhere it ain't looking for Jews and Hebrews are y'all listening to me sons and daughters are everywhere I know y'all want to send Tina Turner to hell because she was a Buddhist you don't know who God got over there in Buddhism you shut your mouth you don't know God like that we know doctrine but we don't know the creator In fact, your doctrine won't allow you to know the creator. Because your doctrine tells you God can't talk outside of 66 books. Your doctrine tells you God can't speak outside of his word. When in the beginning was the word and there was no book. See, 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 that's to keep you from seeking God outside of your tradition. It is to keep you from seeking God and being face to face with God. Here's a scripture. I know y'all thought it was a rapture scripture. <sighs> y'all just be waiting for the rapture. I just be so glad when the Lord come ascend for me. They've been saying that for 2,000 years. So why don't you get prepared for the time that you got left so that you can leave your mark in this earth. Oh, why watch? Oh, don't, don't speak in tongues like that, baby. Don't speak in tongues like that. I mean, that's a trigger. That, that, I'm sorry, but that's a trigger. That, that may, don't do it because I've been spent the rest of my time in tongues and y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, now watch here. Watch. I'm going to tell you prophetically where we are. And I'm going to tell you why the earth is in travail, why the earth is trying to correct itself.
because there are no sons and daughters, mature ones, Adam, whose place in the earth matches where they've been seated in heavenly places. We're seated together with him in heavenly places. But your seat in the earth don't match nowhere where he done set you. Matter of fact, you can be seated somewhere with God in heavenly places and the church won't even give you a place. Uh, and God will still let you operate. That's why Big Mama was a prophet. Y'all not going to say nothing to me. Big Mama, the women could tell you, baby, that's a boy. You better have a boy. Uh-huh. They can say, uh-huh, that ain't your husband, baby. Uh, why they had sight then. They wouldn't give them pulpits. They wouldn't give them mics. They wouldn't give them places to function. But they sat in their seat in the earth where God had placed them in the heavens and they operated from that seat we are seated together with him in heavenly places but your place in the earth is nowhere near where God has set you the purpose of prayer then the purpose of corporate prayer the purpose of our meeting together is for us to get in place so that the earth cannot be in travail even until now waiting now let me show you where we at These so-called Abrahamic religions. Oh, he gives me the look. That's not good. That <laughs> and these so-called Abrahamic religions, that would be Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. We all claim that we came out of Abraham. Now, let me tell you something wrong with that. Abraham ain't had no baby. Now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 